Okay, so here is our standard form equation for parabolas. When I showed it before, I had the y equals the y on the left side of the equation, but this is just flipped around, um, and I've got a reason for that I'll get to later. But um, what I want to do is, um, um, I, well, this example, what I'm going to do is write a quadratic function in standard form for a parabola through these three points. So I just have these through three points three through points, and I'm going to write an equation. Um, so I ne really need to figure out what a, b, and c are. They're just numbers, right? And then my, um, my final answer will look something like that. Okay? So what I want to do is plug each ordered pair into the standard form equation. Okay? So, you know, I'll use this as an x, y pair. So just to keep track of what I'm doing over here, I'm going to use that as x and y. So um, I'm, I'm putting 1 in, in both of the x positions. And then I'm putting negative 5 in for y. Okay. And then I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. 1 squared is 1. So this would be 1a or just a. 1 times b is b. Okay, so there's my equation after I've plugged in that this xy pair. I'm going to repeat the process with the two other xy pairs. So um, let's do this with the point 0.35. So putting in, I'm just kind of writing my blank equation here. Okay, so I'm going to put in um, 5 for y, so that'll go here, and 3 for x. Okay. Now remember, you're just squaring the 3. You're not squaring the a. So this is going to be a times 9, or 9a. And then I've got 3b plus c equals 5. Okay. Um, and um, repeat the process once more with the point 416. Okay, so the x is going to get squared here. And there's the x again. And the 16 will go over in this position. So 4 squared is 16. 16 times a would be 16a. Plus 4b plus c equals 16. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use these three equations together. Okay. So if I just rewrite them here. Hopefully I don't copy anything down wrong here. Okay, so there's my three equations, and we have some different options here. You could solve this by hand by doing elimination. I've got a video uh, that I've made about that that I'll put in um, a link. Um, I'll put a link in the in the description. Um, I'm going to do this with a uh, using my calculator. I'm going to use a matrix. Okay, and I've got a video for that as well. I'm going to briefly explain it down below. Um, but what I want to do is think of this as a matrix. It's already set up with A's, B's, C's, equal signs, and constants. So that's why I had the Y equals on the right, because I knew I was going to um, wind up writing a matrix out of this. Okay, so the matrix of this system, I'm just going to take the coefficients, 1, 1, 1, negative 5, and then 9, 3, 1, positive 5, and 16, 4, 1, 16. Okay, and now what I'm going to have my calculator do is um, write this in reduced row echelon form, which is going to look like this. Okay, I'm leaving some space there because I don't know what these final numbers are. But this top, if you think about this as an equation, the top row there, that represents a plus b plus c equals negative 5. 1a plus 1b plus 1c, right? So this is going to say 1a plus 0b plus 0, 0c equals something. So this top line is really going to be telling me what a equals, right? And this would be 0a plus 1b plus 0c. So this is going to give me b. 
and um, I'm going to get C equals. I don't know what they equal yet because I have to figure out what goes in these slots right here, right? Um, but that's where I'm going to use my calculator, okay? So, yeah, again, there will be a link to my longer video about this, but I'm using a graphing calculator, okay? Um, okay, so here's my calculator. I want to go to, let me see if I can get this on screen here. Um, I'm going to go to um, the matrix menu. It's a little hard to see here, but it's above the uh, X to the negative first button. So I'm going to hit second and then X to the negative first to get to the matrix menu. So that's where, where that is, right? Okay. Now I want to go over to edit at the top here. I'm going to scroll over to edit. Okay, and I'll hit enter. I'm going to, you can put it in wherever you want. I'm going to put it in as matrix A. Okay, and the dimensions here are three by four. This is a three by four matrix. Okay, three rows, four columns. So that's already set up here. If it wasn't, just hit three, enter, four, enter, but set up on mine. I already have another matrix stored in here, but this is not the right matrix, so I'm just going to write right over it. So I'm going to hit one, enter, to get my top left entry there, and then my it'll automatically go to the right, and I'm going to hit one, one, and then negative five. Okay, and when you do negative, don't hit minus, hit the negative button down here, the one in parentheses. So I'm hitting negative 5, enter, and then I've got the top row entered. You can't see the whole top row here, but you could scroll to the right and see, oh, it's got a negative 5. So you can use the cursors to scroll back and forth. Okay, second row, 9, enter, 3, enter, 1, enter, positive 5, enter, and then I've got 16, 4, 1, and 16. Okay. Now I want my calculator. I've got this stored in my calculator. I'm going to go back to, to the, to the um, home screen by um, going to quit. Quit is right above mode. So I'm going to hit second and then mode to get to quit. That's just my home screen. Or you could just turn the calculator off and back on. Your uh, matrix will still be stored there. Okay. All right. So um, now I'm going to um, put the matrix in reduced row echelon form or RF. This will be RF for short. Okay, and here's kind of the directions, but I'm going back to the matrix menu. Um, I'm going to choose um, math this time. I'm going to do some math with the matrix, so I'll hit to the right to get to the math column. And then I'm going to scroll down a ways until I get to RF. You'll see ref, but you want RF, reduced row echelon form. So notice I'm not choosing ref, choosing RF. Okay, and then I want to go take reduced row echelon form. I have to tell my calculator what matrix. So I'm going to go back to the matrix menu one more time. I hit second, x to the negative first, and choose the name of matrix A or wherever you stored it. Okay, and then I'll hit enter one last time on my calculator, and it will rewrite this in reduced row echelon form. So really that's telling me that, hey, these values here, are those. So the top row again, 1A is going to equal 2. 1B is going to equal negative 3. 1C is going to equal negative 4. So now I know what A, B, and C equal. Okay, And I've done 99% of the work, Okay, but I still haven't answered the question. Okay, So let's go back. Let me scroll out a little bit here. We're asked to write a quadratic function in standard form. Okay. So that means I still need to write, I know what A, B, and C are now, but I still need to write the equation. I see a lot of times people will just tell me what A, B, and C equal, but this is asking for an equation to fit those points, okay? Um, so yeah, the values of A, B, and C are in the right column in reduced row echelon form, okay? Plug them back in. So yeah, we figured out A was two, B was negative 3, C was negative 4, and you could write Y equals or equals Y, you could put the Y on either side, but there is um, the equation of the parabola that's going to fit those three points. Okay. okay, let's move on to the next page and different type of problem here. Um, we're going to be writing equations given a particular vertex and a through point okay so we're going to use vertex form here um, so 
let's write an equation for a parabola with a vertex at 4, negative 9. So that's going to be my h and my k, right? In the equation, the vertex is going to be the point h, k. So I want to plug h and k into um, and, um, and the through point into vertex form. Okay, so let's just start with uh, the vertex. So um, I already know that this is going to be in this format. Um, my h is 4 and my k is negative 9. So all I really need to do is solve for a. I need to figure out what a equals. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to do is plug in my through point. I'll use this as an x and a y in this equation, right? So I'm saying I'm plugging in the vertex and the xy pair that I know, okay? So I'm plugging in 2 for y. I don't know why I started it up there, but I'm plugging in um, negative 1 for x. Okay, and now I can solve this for a. There's only one variable in this equation, so I'm going to start in the uh, with the uh, parentheses there. Okay, and then I'll um, do the exponent. So negative five squared is positive twenty-five. Excuse the bell there. Okay, um, so I'm solving for a. I want to add nine to both sides, and that will give me eleven is going to equal twenty-five a. And then last, I'm going to divide by um, 25. So a is going to equal 11 over 25. OK? And yes, yeah, sometimes a value is a fraction. Sometimes it's a, it's a coefficient. Sometimes it's not. Now, um, last thing I'm going to do is substitute in the three things that I know. I, I know um, now I know the value of a. I also want to make sure I substitute in h and k. So remember, all I was trying to do with all that work is find this piece. So now I can rewrite that equation, right? So I'm going to get y equals 11 25ths x minus 4 squared minus 9. OK? So that's the process, OK? So we've got a problem just like it. So you can pause the video and try it out if you like. I'll start working through this. So the vertex is my um, h and k. I'm going to plug this in for x and y. So yeah, I'm just kind of starting with my vertex form and plugging everything into this. So um, a, I don't know yet. Oops, said so I was going to plug in everything. Forgot to plug in 5 for y. I don't know a yet. X is going to be negative 4. H is going to be 3. And I'm off screen. Sorry about that. Okay, and then K is negative 2. All right, so now I can solve this for A. Negative 7 squared is positive 49. Okay, I'll add 2, and I'll see a lot of people tell me that a equals 7 here, and I understand where they're getting at, but we want to divide both sides by 49. So it's not going to be 7, it's going to be 1 7th when you, um, when you reduce this. Okay. All right, so there's my a value, and now I'm ready to go, because um, put that in the a slot, and then um, h was... 3, and k was negative 2. And there we go. Okay. On the next page, this is a very similar um, type of problem. Um, we had, on the last problem, we had a vertex and a through point. Now we're going to have um, two inter x-intercepts and a through point. Okay. So actually, you could do this. I have three different... Um, I have three different um, points. If you think about it, if you have the two, these are three different points. So you could do this the same way um, we did the problem at the beginning of the notes, where you just had th three different through points. Um, but there's another way. I'm going to um, do this with x-intercept form. 
So um, I'm just going to write my equation in this format. So if I could figure out what A, P, and Q are, um, if I can figure out what A, P, and Q are, then I'll be in good shape. Okay. So it's a similar type of uh, process. I'm going to um, plug in the through point P and Q into x-intercept form. So it's right above there. And then I'm going to solve for A. Okay, so, um, all right, so the, um, the P and Q are going to be the x-intercepts, okay? Um, so, yeah, I should write that up here. My x-intercepts are going to equal P and Q, all right? So when I think about that, the x-intercepts here are going to be 3 and negative 5, okay? So P is going to equal 3. And then Q is going to equal negative 5, okay? And then this through point, I'm just going to use that as an XY pair, just like I did in the last problem, okay? So looking at this, um, let's start plugging stuff in. So I'm plugging in negative 2 for Y. I don't know A yet. I'm going to plug in positive 6 for X. And then, so X minus P, the P is 3. And then I'm plugging in x again. It's in two positions in this, right? So 6 again, but then I'm going to subtract the q. So I'm subtracting negative 5, okay? And then I'm going to solve this for a. So 6 minus 3 is 3. Then that would be 6 plus 5 is 11, right? So that will be 33a when I do all that multiplication. I'll divide by 33. And so I'm going to get negative 2 over 33 for my A value. Okay. Um, so now we're ready to go. Um, I'm going to plug in um, the, the three things that I know, right? I'm going to plug in A, which I just found, but also P and Q into x-intercept form. Okay. So I'm doing this again. But, you know, I want Y and X in my equation, right? I just want, I want to really plug in these three pieces, right, to write the equation. So negative 2 over 33 for A. P was negative 3, and Q was negative 5. So I'm subtracting negative 5, but I'd want to write that as plus 5 in my final answer. Okay, And you can multiply this all together if you wanted to put it in standard form, but um, I'm just going to write that in x-intercept form. Okay. All right, there's another problem just like it below. So you can pause and try it out if you like. Um, so this one's P, and this one's Q, and those are, you could switch those. It doesn't matter which one's P, which one's Q. But this is my through point, so that's my XY pair, okay? So I'm going to start plugging in to X-intercept form. Okay, so I'm going to plug, well, no, I'm not going to plug that in. I'm going to plug everything else in to find A. So I'm plugging in 5 for Y. I'm plugging in negative 4 for x, and that's going to go in both of those positions. p is 2, so I'm subtracting 2, and then I'm subtracting negative 3 for q. Okay, Let's solve that for a. So negative 4 plus 3 would be negative 1. So that's going to be 6a. Divide by 6, and... A is going to equal 5 sixths. Okay. So now I'm ready to rewrite this equation with the A value in that slot. I'm going to subtract the P value and subtract the Q value from the second X. So that would be plus 3. There's my equation. And so it's a lot quicker, actually, than, than doing the uh, system of uh, equations like we did on the, on the first type.